There were a lot of things going on in the world during the summer of 1963, but in my house, it was all about the heat. Michael, I said go get Shui some water. I was just seven. That dog's gonna die in this heat. And our electricity was inside, but our water was outside. Go on now. It's your dog. Hey, my dog. Way outside. <laughs> As I got that water, there was no way of knowing that today was going to be one of those days that would change my life forever. Of course, in my young age, a thought like that would have never even crossed my mind. Now, we were going into town to get oats for the mule. It may sound simple now, but for me back then, that was a very big deal. Shaylee, don't drink this water off. Mom said we could be gone for a couple of hours. Michael, let's go. Now don't touch this till we get into town, okay? Or at least on the bus. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Now, my mama didn't have much patience for discourteous drivers. Damn fool. All right? Yes, ma'am. And even less for August Opal like a heat. Oh. But when it came to me... It's a fine time to eat. Come on. She had all the patience in the world. But this summer, that virtue was about to get pushed to its limits. I was really glad to see the bus bench because my feet were on fire and my throat was as dry as a bone. Now, we had a lot of strange customs down here. Raising the red flag to signal the driver to stop, that didn't make sense to my seven-year-old brain because we weren't exactly hard to miss and this was, in fact, a bus stop. Go on, pick it up. Another one of those weird customs was the first come first serve thing. On the surface, it was pretty easy to understand. Good morning, ma'am. If you got somewhere first, whatever you got there first for was yours. But this rule got a little fuzzy when they showed up. strange ways of doing things, it didn't stop there. They paid their fare and took their seats. But we paid our fare got off the bus and then would walk around to the back. And then we would go through the back door. The whole thing just seemed like a very inefficient way to load a vehicle. Once inside, we would take our seats. 
or not. Granddaddy used to say, more people don't necessarily mean more fun. Still, nothing could kill my excitement of going to the big city. Downtown Opelite, where you never knew what you were going to see. For instance, on the TV, it was usually people who looked like me getting hit. I didn't have much time to think about it, cause in a second, we were headed off to Main Street. To me, the courthouse was so tall, it almost touched the sky. My granddad always said the traffic was so terrible on Main Street, he'd never go down there. But all that hustle and bustle, I kind of liked it. Now the people who had to get off in the back sometimes went to the front. And the people who got off in the front, well they sometimes went to the back. Now the bus depot had so many folks darting in and out that they had two doors. Claire. One for them. and one for us. Hey! And just down the street, there were even two kinds of drinking fountains. And after a long, hot bus ride, I couldn't wait to take a drink. thirsty, even warm, rusty water tastes good. But only to a certain point. Once you pretty much wet your lips, well, that was enough. So it didn't quite add up when that boy kept drinking and drinking. And that's when it hit. The white water must be different. It must be better. You nothing, Mama me, and don't you be getting those ideas in your head. Us folk don't have them options, you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Too late. Ideas were flowing. Heading home, that white water was all I could think about. But I didn't realize some thoughts could be deadly. So the next few days, that white water was stuck in my brain. I tried to do things to keep my mind from thinking about it. But to tell the truth, it seemed like water was everywhere. So it wasn't that easy. And when a neighbor came over because her mama's well went dry, well, my cousin Red seemed to notice her. She seemed to notice him. But all I could see was that water. 
seemed like I couldn't concentrate on anything else. And everything, including my accurate ball tossing ability, seemed to be lost forever. Yeah, that's what Mama said. But to tell the truth, I don't think Jesus could possibly know how much it hurt me. Or else he wouldn't have been sitting on the sidelines just watching this happen. Or would he? He will save you. He will save you. Either way, I often wondered what team he was rooting for anyway. Just now, just now, he will say. You always getting your butt wolf to doing one thing and thinking about the other. And I know what you're thinking about this time, too. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Ah, oh, what did you do that for? For thinking about her. Thinking about who? Cassandra. I saw you looking at her. She's mine. I was looking at her or thinking about her. If you want, then what were you thinking about? Go on, spit it out. The white water. The what? You know, the water in there fountain. Don't you ever think about it? No. Well, I do, almost all the time. I mean, don't you ever wonder what it must taste like? Hell no. Well, I'm pretty sure it tastes a whole lot better than ours. I'm gonna... Ah! Now what? I'm trying to knock sense into your stupid head. But you did let me finish! I don't need you to finish telling me how you're gonna do some type of crazy fool thing like drinking out of a white's only fountain. Now get that white water out of your head before you get into a heap of trouble. <sighs> you ain't gonna tell Mama about this, are you? I could not let my mama find out anything about that white water as there was no telling what she might do. She was the most fearless person I knew. What seems to be the problem here? This gal don't want to pay for her new shoes. Because I ain't bought no shoes. Oh, but you tried them on. They hurt my feet. I ain't gonna buy no shoes that don't fit. Hold it. Who's gonna buy these shoes? After she done tried them on. Now, I said I ain't gonna buy them shoes. Ain't there other places you can buy shoes in this town? Yes, sir. Then why don't you go do that, then? This was definitely not the time to pester my mama about any type of water. Next day, I wasn't thinking about water or even looking at water. I was just trying to stay out of trouble. But I guess I wasn't doing such a good job of that as there was no ball playing in our house and no going in the living room and definitely no going in my mama's room. And messing with the saxophone, well, that was really off limits. See, the saxophone was my dad's, but my mama told me it was hers now till she got all the money he owed her back. It sure was a pretty thing, that saxophone. And as far as I knew, my daddy loved that saxophone more than life itself. Maybe that's why my mama wasn't too big a fan of my daddy. 
I once heard her say he's a man who women love, husbands hate, and creditors can't find. Michael, life lessons number one. Don't ever put your lips on another man's mouthpiece. Pull it up. Thanks, Dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, you give me a beat? Yeah. Okay, I'll show you. You can do it, come on. Put your hands right there. Come on. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap, boom. Come on, go ahead, go ahead. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap, boom. Come on. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap, boom. Come on. Tap, tap. Keep it going. Tap, tap, boom. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Tap, tap, boom. Tap, tap. Life lessons two through ten. It's all in the attitude. Boy, you got attitude. Hold on. Why don't you go double check and make sure that your mama and your granddad ain't around? They ain't around. Mom went to town. My grandpa's out working in the field. And there it is. Come on. What? Is that a new car? New to me? Why don't you say we uh take it for a ride? Yeah. Yeah. While we at it, might as well go get some dinner, right? All right. Okay. Have a seat. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, see what we got. Uh. I guess we ain't gonna be having no dinner tonight. That's nonsense, boy. Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. He figures things out, makes them happen. We're gonna get some food. Come on here. Can't stand it. Just another bunch of papers piling up in the house. And to be honest, it's just another bill I got to pay. You sure right about that? You know, but after that day I, I saw you, I remember I had to tell you something. I couldn't sleep for a while. Well, what do you got to say? This whole insurance thing it ain't about me. Ain't about you either. It's about him. That's right, your boy. And him, my boy. My flesh and blood, my all in all. You know, if the good Lord would have called me home today and I didn't have those papers signed and filled out, oh man, my soul would just toss for eternity. Come on over, son. Knowing that his belly was empty and he didn't have a roof over his head, I would go to St. Peter myself and have him send me straight to hell. I don't know. I guess my dress is caught on the fence. Must be ready. Get it unstuck. Marco, go over there and play with that boy. Keep him out here, all right? I gotta go help this woman get her dress. I'm stuck out the fence. I won't be long. What you doing? What you Must doing? have been a high fence because my daddy sure took some time and made plenty ruckus trying to get that lady off it. 
You want that policy? Baby! Take care of Whose policy. car is Take this? Who are you selling there? Yeah. How the hell? Oh, yeah, yeah, calm down. Calm down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll put your copy in the mail. Come on, son. Time to go. Come on, time to go. You better run. <laughs> Daddy said, some folk just don't know how to appreciate a helping hand. Come on, baby. Why don't you stop doing this? Yeah, this is the last time. As if seeing my daddy run half-dressed out of ladies' house wasn't exciting enough, now we were going into the fanciest restaurant I'd ever seen in all my seven years of life. Thank you. Important thing was she paid for the policy, so we got food. Come on, keep digging in. Life lesson number 11. Any supper can be your last, so you always have your dessert first. Never live life with regrets. You'll always wonder what if. And another thing, don't go telling people about your dreams. They'll only tell you why they can't come true. You hear me? Sometimes a man gotta make some hard decisions. Unpopular decisions. Dangerous decisions. Sometimes those decisions can cause conflict. Yeah, lots of conflict. Can I ask a personal question? Uh-oh. Have you ever tasted it? Sure I have. But you don't know what I wanna ask you. The white water. White what? You know, the water. They're what? thinking about it. What about it? Well, have you ever tasted it before? Sure. Hundreds of times. But it tastes hot. Delicious. Don't you want to try some? Yeah? Yeah, Dad. Thing is, you got to be real, real sneaky. You can do that. We'll finish up. I don't know how that policeman knew what we were up to, but he did before we even got there. And now we were in trouble. Big trouble. Oh, you know everything, don't you, huh? Well, yeah, you can bet that these folks know what you've been up to, and so do I, doggone it. Yeah. You and that heathenous father of yours. That's right. You keep acting stupid. That man's gonna string you up. He's gonna put you underneath the jail. He's gonna make you eat the key. And that's only if he's in a good mood. Come on. Deputy. You found my car. Thank goodness. And thank you. That's why you pay taxes, ain't it? Well, did you catch the low-life skunk who stole it? Sanders, bring that boy out here. Terrence? Go right on. And you lucky I don't send you out to that tree right now. You can't whoop that boy for listening to his daddy, Annie. His daddy is a man of bad ideas and even worse intentions. Hey. You go get ready for bed. We're going to finish this later. Ooh, I swear if I never see that man again. <laughs> don't say what you don't mean. Oh, I mean it all right. Hey, Annie. <sighs> when did you get out? It was all a big misunderstanding. Uh-huh. Now, what's not to understand about stealing cars? <laughs> No car was stolen. It was borrowed. And after Cloretta helped clear things up, they let me out. You know, um, now it sure would be a lot easier to get you your money back if I had my sacks.
Mira qué bueno. You know, um, baby girl, maybe, maybe you and me should, um, try to work things out, hmm? Come on, T. I got work in the morning, and you got work tonight. <laughs> you have got some nerve. I'm breaking my back trying to raise that boy right. And like the wind, you just come blowing into town keeping him up all hours of the night and putting all kind of crazy thoughts in his head. Next time you even get the notion to do that, I will snatch out your windpipe and feed it to them hogs. You understand me? Yes, ma'am. And a little salvation wouldn't hurt you either. You haven't seen the inside of a church since before Christ was born. That's a miracle you ain't gonna never see happen. Okay, woman, we're coming. Sky dreams, okay? You're just gonna end up just like him. You know I love you. You sleep well. Night. I sure didn't want to end up like my daddy. Mama hated my daddy, and I didn't want to end up with Mama hating me. So I made a decision right then and there to put that white water out of my mind for good. But the truth is, some dreams don't die easy. That night, I saw myself in a desert. The sun was brutal. My mouth was as dry as the sand. And as I trekked across that desert, that white water was like an oasis in the distance, just calling my name. Try as I might, I couldn't reach it. So by the next morning, I had a new plan. You know good and well, there ain't nothing wrong with you. <coughs> the only thing that's wrong with you is your bad acting. Hey, this cousin of yours, 
up at all hours of the night with a little cat father of his. It's no wonder you're sick. Now, see, child, you got to keep it in your mouth for it to work. You stay in bed today, okay? I want you chasing after that dog. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right, come on now, Red. Don't miss that bus. My mama did cooking and cleaning for some folks down the road. She'd be gone until four. That's when her show came on, Queen for a Day. And nothing was going to keep her from her show. And my grandpa? Well, he wouldn't be back from the field till dark. Miss Wilkins towels and I guess you forgot you were sick. Oh no, I know you're not trying to talk back. Come on. Whew. Hey, there ain't no rest for the weary. You think you slick. No, you do, don't uh -uh. you? Well, you ain't. I know slick. I'm very slick. Yes, ma'am. And slick slid off. You won't slide off? No. Come on. Come on in this house. Okay. You must be out your mind. If you say so. What you have to say for yourself? Uh -huh. Now don't you say one damn word. Now get in this house. Uh-huh. Now go out there and get the switch. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Just now. He will save you. He will save you just now. He is able. He is able. He is able just now. Just now. Lord, like liars, I ain't raising a liar. Do you hear me, boy? Yes, ma'am. And I ain't having no liars living under this roof. Do you understand me, Michael? Yes, ma'am. See, because first it's lying, then it's stealing, and then it's killing. And with God as my witness, I will not have lying, stealing killers under this roof. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Yes, ma'am. Just now. Just now, call upon him, call upon him, just now. I want to let you know, there are no sinners in heaven. There are no schemers in heaven. Need I say, there certainly are no buyers in heaven. I was sure he was talking about me. Probably even pointing at me. But I knew he knew. God knows exactly where you sinners are. God knows exactly what you're planning on doing before you do it. Thou shalt not drink. The white water! Maybe it was my imagination, but Reverend Stokes seemed to always know about everything. Now, Sister Annie, now if I didn't know better, I swear that chicken of yours comes straight down from heaven. 
I don't know why in the world you don't open up your own restaurant. <laughs> I always talking about her food. You know, about <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you why, Reverend, because I ain't got no time and no money, and well, God only gave this color girl two hands. Well, as you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Oh, well, Brother Gene, up the phone. <laughs> How you doing today? Dry, Reverend. Dry. But I ain't touching. Now, dry. So you say. So you say. God bless you, brother. Take your wing and fly away. Hey, Michael. Look, how you been? I've been dry, too. I haven't thought about drinking near dry, fever. Well. You've been wanting some special water, right? They say the water's so special that ain't old Miss Williams walk again. You should decide. Yeah, stop worrying, little cousin. I got this all figured out. Now, I was no stranger to getting in trouble. But with Red, it was a whole different kind of trouble. Who's fuss? I'm fuss. No, 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 Nobody's first. This wasn't your run-of-the-mill scent. Nah, we got caught darn near buck naked about the horse around in the Lord's very own sacred baptismal pool. Now, that water might have made old Miss Williams walk again, but me and Red weren't going to be sitting again for a Come long time. Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Mama said Jesus knows everything. But even he seemed pretty surprised about this. Ow! Ow! And that's when I realized Reverend Stokes must have a man on the inside. And if God filled him in on the skinny dipping thing, it was only a matter of time till he tipped him off on what I might be scheming up next. Just now, just now, he will Right then and there, I knew I needed to make my brain work even harder so I could create my best plan yet. about that white water, is it? Is it? You're crazy. You don't lost your damn mind. You know what them folk would do to you if you get caught? They'll hang you out the hanging bridge for sure. The hanging bridge? The big wood bridge outside the city. They'll leave your limp behind swinging at the train tracks. Ever seen anybody hung before? Uh-uh. First your eyes pop out of your head. Then your lungs just blow up. And sometimes your head snaps clean off your body and hits the ground with a thump and bounces around like a basketball. And if that ain't enough, they'll get what's left of you and put you in a fire and watch you burn. Of course, if they hang you a hanging bridge, the train will come along and smash you into smithereens. Your body looks so bad after that, when you get to heaven, God won't even recognize you. After all of I told you, you still ain't gonna let this go, is ya? Uh-uh. Will God help you? Cause I sure as hell ain't gonna. I got you past your mama. Now you're on your own. Damn! That was the 
this to a dead deputy. Why'd they call him that? Because he's meaner than a mad dog. And when he gets to beat you with that club, it hurts so bad, you wish you were dead. I'm going home. You coming? You're crazy. You're on your own, cuz. Your mom? She's at work, sir. Well, where are you going, boy? I'm going to town to see my teacher. On a Saturday morning? I gotta take a makeup test in geography. All right, Einstein. Let's go. at the bus depot? Yes, sir. And you waiting on her? Uh-huh. Across the street? <laughs> well, I guess I'll just sit right down and wait with you. <sighs> it's okay, sir. I'll be all right. No, I'm sure you will. But this will give us a chance to catch up a little bit. Aren't you busy with your preaching and all your other preacher stuff? Son, I got all the time in the world. ever count on somebody to do one thing and they did another? Well, I wasn't counting on my daddy to drink from the colored folks fountain. Seeing my daddy walk past that white water was a bit of a letdown. It really was. And the day didn't get any better after that. That's the last bus of the day. I pity anybody that's supposed to be on that bus because she is the last one of the day. Son, 
I'll take you home. Boy, you better get on it, I'll be my teaser. Hickory switch four, you're behind zero. I was the one getting hit, but it was Jesus who was turning the other cheek. I was getting so many whoopings, it felt like the Lord had just given up on me altogether. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. Yeah, uh, Sister Annie, you know, some folks, strong folks, well, there comes a time when they need something. Sister Annie, is we talking about one of those times? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. I see that, uh, I see that your soul is heavy. Can you say what's wrong? Oh, you know, it's not, it's not really anything much. Well, if it's not much, well, it should be easy for us to go right ahead. I'm just having it. trouble with Michael because he just won't listen. He won't listen. He won't do what I say. It's just not like him. He's just gotten so contrary, just like his daddy, just like his daddy Terrence who was killing me. You know, I know we ain't together and it ain't none of my business, but I hear what he does and who he does it with and how he does it. You know, Opelika is a small town. Things get around and I just need him to step up and be a man and be an example for my boy. And he just isn't doing it. You know, I need help with, with, with my nephew, Red. Red is trouble times 10, you know, and my daddy, my daddy tries to help, but I mean, he's old, he's old. And so by the time he gets home from work, it's like, I got three babies to take care of. You know, only one of them is 70 and I just, I can't handle it. I just can't, I just, it's too much. Sister, it's sister, too sister. Oh, now, that does seem like that's a lot wrong. Let's pray about it, right here in front of the Lord. Come on. All right, now, sister, uh, this is your prayer. You need to petition the Lord. Lord, bless my daddy, because that's Michael's granddaddy, and he's old, and Henri, but he's ours. That's our daddy, Lord. And Lord, give me patience, because I try to do my best by Michael, but just give me the strength to do better. Give me the strength to do better. Lord. And Lord, give me calm. Give me calm to deal with Michael's trifling, heathenous father. Oh, yes, Lord, give us strength to deal with Michael's trifling daddy. And heathenous. Heathenous, heathenous. And Lord, I'm a young woman. She young. And I'm all alone. She by herself. And I don't do no wrong. She don't do no wrong. Because I'm a mother and a daughter and a child of God, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. But I have a yearning. And my loins feel a fire. Now her loins feel a fire. Yes, they do, Lord. And I need me a man. Oh, sweet Jesus. I need me a man to put that fire out. Yes, Lord, amen, amen, Lord, put it out. Yes, amen. Okay, yes, amen. You think he heard me? Oh, yes. Uh, you were loud and clear, sister. You were loud and clear. And, and it may, may I suggest that you and Michael bring yourselves by our weekly prayer meeting so the Lord can get to work on them things right away. Yes. We'll be there. All right. Yes, thanks. Praise God. Lord, please send that woman the biggest holes you can find before she burns down this whole damn town. Amen. Boy, I swear.
there you got the devil in you. And if I can't whoop him out or sweat him out, then I'm going to pray him out of you. And this ain't going to be no regular praying. Do you hear me? This is going to be revival praying. Now, that's every night of the week for a month praying. Mm-hmm. You better get right with yourself. Look at yourself and get right with yourself. <sighs> Come on now. So, let old Rep Stokes know what's troubling you this evening. Reverend, do you think you can talk to God about getting our streets paved? I mean, when it rains, that nasty red clay gets all on our shoes. Then it's in our yard. Then next news you know, it's trapped all over the house. Well, I think that's something you probably should better take up with the mayor. The mayor don't care nothing about us. All he cares about is getting our taxes. Yes. Yes. When I know that gets things done around here, I think you should run for mayor. Yeah! yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sister Ann, I, I appreciate your confidence, but uh, I don't see any sign that the folks around here are ready for something like that. Well, Reverend, maybe God will give you a sign. Well, it'd have to be a mighty big sign, son. A mighty big one. Brother. I'll be sure to let my husband know I ran into you. Okay. But you better check out that. Tommy, come on. But, Mama, we just started talking. Boy, don't you give me no lip. Move. We're going home right now. You say what they just boys talking. They're just being friendly, that's all. Well, not here, they ain't. Your father killed the both of us. Go on. Mama. Between not being able to see my friend Tommy and not being able to taste any white water, I was pretty down in the dumps. Where's your head at? It sure ain't on hitting any targets. Ah! What you hit me for? To knock some sense into your skull. Now get that damn white water out of your head. You ain't got enough skin left on your black behind to keep on doing this. What's wrong with your cousin? Nothing. Let's go. That fool just wants to taste that white water. Really? You know what, Michael? I've always wanted to know what it tastes like, too. You've had? I've tried it before. Wait, 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 what? You have? A bunch of times. Where? In town? No, I got a special place for it. <laughs> you do? Yeah, you want to go there? Yeah. Great, I'm in. You sure? It was Michael's idea. He should go first. Get 
get another shot. Coming. What the hell? Run! You three don't move, damn it! We need to split up. But why? That's just what you do, like on television. You split up. That's a shotgun. Split. Me at Devil's Crossing. That's right, you little thieves. He's gonna arrest you if I don't shoot you first. You wanna stay after little niggers? I forget them. We got a meeting to get to. Who the hell said you could use my gun? Nothing? Well, all right, well, if they turn up or if you hear anything, then just give us a call. All right, then. Oh, now, Cassandra's mom says that Cassandra usually comes home like clockwork, and she has not seen them either. She's just gonna wait there in case they come back that way. Maybe they missed the bus. Or maybe it broke down. Or maybe it crashed. Now, wait a minute. Don't jump to conclusions. Where were they last? Somebody must have seen them. Well, maybe Reverend Stokes knows, because he knows what everybody's up to. I'm, I'm gonna call him. Stop now. We gotta keep on going. And for all we know, he's back at the house. How do you know that deputy didn't catch him? How do you know that crazy old man didn't feel him for the buckshot? How do you know he ain't dead? Maybe he's already inside. No, he'd be waiting out here. And if I go inside without my cousin, my Aunt Andy's gonna kill me. You're not the only one in trouble, Red. And we have to help find Michael. Come on. Reverend, what's going on? What's going on? I'm here to help your folks look for you all. Where's Michael? What you mean you lost him? You don't just go losing your cousin, boy. Lost him where? Look at me, boy. Tell him at Chambers County. What could you possibly be doing in those parts at that time of night? Don't you know that's clan country? We wanted to taste the water from the white folk fountain. He wanted to. Sweet Jesus. I swear, if they lay a hand on him, I'm going to snatch each and every limb off their body. No time to waste. We got to find that boy before he gets found. Yeah, come on, I'll drive. I didn't understand everything they were saying, but I knew whatever it was, it wasn't good for me. All right, now look here, I got a representation. This is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, 
And this is what we need to get rid of. Yeah. so mad at me. I got it on my rope thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that thing hot? Yeah. Kind of itchy too. How are you getting home? Getting lost is kind of scary. Yep, it is. I asked my daddy to give you a ride, but I don't suppose that'd be a good idea just right now. I don't suppose you. Hurry, run! Go, hurry, run! What's wrong, Tommy? What's out there, boy? Uh, I, I saw a snake. Yeah, a, a really big snake. Christ! It ain't nothing. The boy just saw a snake, that's all. Then on back. place I'd ever heard folks singing and dancing like this was at church. So I figured this must be some kind of church get-together. And since all the church people I knew were friendly enough, I thought for sure one of the deacons or sisters in the choir would gladly give me a ride home. But I could quickly tell this was no ordinary church get-together. In fact, I was pretty sure this had nothing to do with church at all. But from what Reverend Stokes had always preached about, it seemed these folks had most of their sinning bases covered. But for a group of miserable sinners, they sure seem to be having a lot of fun. so much dirt. Come on with me. It's still a party even if I ain't in there. Come on, baby, sit right here. Uh oh. Oh. Mm. So does this dirty little boy have a name? Michael. Why aren't you home, child? I got lost. But my daddy here now. He could take me home when he done playing. 
Who's your daddy? The saxophone player. Terrence? That's your daddy? I didn't know he had a son around here. Where you from? Opalaka. Opalaka? It's a long way from here. What you doing way out here? Something I wasn't supposed to be doing. Well, what could you possibly be doing that was so bad? I was sneaking in the town to taste the white water. White water? What do you mean? You know, the water from their fountain. I wanted to see what it tasted like. Don't play with me today. Young man, do you know how dangerous that is? They have killed men for less than that. Let me get you something to eat. This is everybody's favorite kind of sandwich. It's the free kind. Thank you, ma'am. It's my mama's name, ma'am. Mine, Sophia. I'll check back in on you in a little bit. Ain't no credit today. You gonna pay up your bill. Let's go. Hey, kid. I got your problem solved. I'm white, right? I got water. Go ahead. See what you're missing, huh? <laughs> now, I ain't afraid to whoop a white man's ass if he's messing with mine. Michael, this place is for grown folks, Michael. Is this where you normally are? I mean, all the time you're not around? <sighs> Son, I know you don't understand, but your mama's probably better off without me. I'm the wrong man for her. Are you the wrong man for me too? You saw something you shouldn't have seen, son. You got a big problem on your hands. I can't see nothing. Oh, keep the faces down. Hey, Look! Terrence, what you doing out? We can't find Michael. Oh, don't worry about it, Annie. I got him here. You got him hid. Yeah, at the juke jump. See, there, there was a raid, and I had to hide him. Now, Terrence, why would you put a boy in a juke joint? I didn't. 
boy just showed up. He's fine, Annie. He's fine, okay? You can go right back on over there and get him. Come on, here, boy. Told the boy to stay put. And Michael, Michael. Not a good night for you, boy. Not a good night at all. Here? Here. Boy, out of the car. Why are you taking me? I just see nothing, I swear to God. Out of the car, boy. This is my hanging bridge. Here's the news. You're gonna find out about hanging bridge, boy. Tie it up there. Hey, 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 you don't. Turn around here. Turn around. Get off of me! Let me go! Shut up, boy. Let's get this taken care of. I ain't got all night. There ain't a soul in there. You sure? Let me go. Michael ain't there. I had the boy hit. I don't understand. I understand that you lost my son. He's mine, too. Well, you sure don't act like it. Yo, hey, wait I... a minute. Stop. Now, this ain't no time for all of that now. Now, we gotta find Michael. Where to next? The bridge. Uh-uh. Lord, no. Because sometimes when folks go missing, they end up here. I told that boy not to come here. Not this bridge. Michael ain't stupid. He ain't come out here. No, you wouldn't have any idea in hell where he is. Well, let's not bring the devil into this. Oh, Jesus. I can't be. I can't look. I can't. Y'all stay put. Oh, damn it. Hey, hey, keep the kids back. Y'all stay put. No! No! And no, 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 no. Mike, this is no, my no, baby. No. Just hold on, hold on. Just pull him up. Hold on. Pull him up. Hold on. Pull him up. Hold on. No, we need to tell the police about this. Terrence. We need to. Pull him up. That train's gonna run right through him. Okay, okay. Terrence, pull him up. I, I, okay, okay. I got him. 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 He got it. He got it. He got it.
Hey, Michael. Don't you mind him. Daddy, when are we going home? I got some business to take care of first. Business I wouldn't have to do if folk weren't doing what they weren't supposed to be doing. Michael! Michael! Somebody thought this was funny. Well, they sure as hell wrong about that. He definitely ain't down there. Where could he be? Look, you know, I'm the last person to bring the lawn or something, but we need to go into town. Come on. Call your mama to get you while I deal with this. Don't you move one inch. happens after you stare death in the eyes you realize you don't have nothing to lose what is that boy doing and when you know that there ain't nothing that can stop you well why don't you stay put Come on, come on! That stupid fool's gonna do it! What the hell? I remember what my dad said. Sometimes being a man involves making Stay. hard decisions, unpopular decisions, Michael. dangerous decisions. I thought that water was going to be cool and refreshing like from a mountain spring. But instead, it tasted just like the same hot, rusty water from our fountain. Hey, boy. Why in the hell did you drink from that fountain? I want to know what it tastes like. tastes like. No! That was the most peculiar thing I'd ever seen. But seeing it was gonna change my life forever. I'd never seen the fountains from that angle before. For the very first time, I could see they were both being fed by the same pipe. It hit me like a freight train. It was the same water, just different fountains with different signs. I conjured up a picture of what that water would taste like based solely on the sign above the fountain. An idea that, as it turned out, had nothing to do with reality. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
For some reason, by the end of that summer, everybody was thinking just a little bit differently. Thank you. Good Reverend morning. Stokes, you. well, he ran for mayor. Good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Thank you. Hey, brother, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm so... And my mama, she decided to open her own restaurant. I guess hell froze over because my daddy actually came to church. Hey boy. There was a rumor that some strange things might have happened at Tommy's home as well. My cousin Red developed a conscience. And later that summer, I discovered something way better than any water. Now, that kiss was pretty special. But I got something even more important, a story. A story I could tell one day to my children, their children, and you. <laughs>